Today I'll be solving the third practice problem on the third homework, which has to do with fins. So again, let's start by restating the problem. Okay, so we have a piece of metal inside of an aircraft engine. Let's see if I can draw this in 3D. That is extending out into some very hot gases. It's, oh, oops, it's attached to this piece of metal right here, a rotating piece of machinery. Now, around this extended piece of metal is some very hot gas at T infinity of 1200 degrees Celsius. And it's moving fast, so it has a very high convection coefficient of 250 watts per meter squared Kelvin. Now, this piece of metal is somewhat tall. It is 5 centimeters, 0 0.05 meters. And the base is at 300 degrees Celsius. Okay, so now what we know about this actual fin that is extending upwards is its thermal conductivity, which is 20 watts per meters Kelvin. We also know the cross-sectional area. So if we take a slice out of the middle, we would know the area of that slice, which is 6 times 10 to the negative fourth meters squared. Finally, of that slice, we would also know what the perimeter is, which is 0 0.11 meters. So we know the cross-sectional area, thermal conductivity, and perimeter of a slice out of this fin. OK, in this problem, we have been asked to find two things. First, this is made of nickel, which has a melting point of 1,050 degrees Celsius. <laughs> well, we have a problem in that our combustion gases are hotter than the melting point of the nickel. So we've been asked to find, will it melt. In other words, is the maximum temperature in this fin going to exceed a value of 1050 degrees Celsius, the melting point of our metal? Second, we've been asked to find what is the rate of heat transfer from the fin into this base material. In this base material, there would be a fluid flowing, removing the excess heat from our fin. So what is the rate of heat removal from the fin into the base. Okay, uh, let's talk about our approach real quick. So we are first going to use an energy balance to find a governing equation. We're going to do that just to show um, the variable theta and how that's used. Uh, once we have that governing equation, we're not going to use it. We're going to look up a tabulated solution. So use tables to solve that governing equation. And those tables will include um, equations that tell us the temperature at any point along the length of our fin and also the heat transfer. So with that in mind, let's do our energy balance. OK, I'm going to redraw our situation here by looking at it now from the side. So here's the top part of our fin extending downwards. And there's the base. So we're going to look at a single differential control volume being along the length of our fin, where this is x. And this would have a height of dx. Now, using an energy balance, we can just model what's happening. So in going into our control volume would be heat conduction, which we will call Qx. Leaving, likewise, is heat conduction, Qx plus dx. So um, how much left, how much came in. Also, you see some of this surface is exposed to those hot gases on the outside. So we're going to have Q convection. Uh, I've drawn it the wrong way. It should be going in. Um, but that will be reflected in math. OK, if we write out the heat diffusion equation, 
then we'll see again, like we saw with the heat diffusion equation, the difference in our heat conduction going in and coming out results in this term, a d squared t dx squared. But now we're going to have a new term which accounts for the heat being added. And that's going to look like this, minus hp over kac times t being our variable t, which varies with x, minus t infinity. And that's going to equal zero. Okay, here we've assumed a few things. One, we've assumed steady state. And we've also assumed 1D conduction. So we're saying all of the conduction heat transfer is only in this direction. There's no variation in this direction in temperature. Okay, um, this is a little hard to solve as is. So we're going to rewrite um, like this. D squared theta dx squared. And we're going to subtract m squared theta equals zero. So you see, we just let theta be equal to tx minus t infinity. We plug that into each t here, so it became that. The second derivative of this, the t infinity would drop out. We're left with this expression. Now where m squared is simply equal to hp over kac. So now what we're going to do is we're not going to solve this equation. It's a second order homogeneous differential equation. We already know the solution. So instead of solving it, we're going to look up tabulated solutions and use those tabulated solutions to find the temperature profile and apply that profile to the top surface and in order to find the heat transfer from the fin. Okay. So to remember, we're going to solve this equation, d squared theta dx squared minus m squared theta equals zero, which is a governing equation telling us the temperature profile inside of a fin, where m is equal to the square root of hp over kac. Um, like I mentioned, we're going to use tabulated solutions specifically in table 3.4, in order to get solutions to this equation. Uh, we also need to know the tip condition. In other words, what is happening at the very end of the fin? In this case, they specified it's adiabatic or insulated. So we go to the table. On the left column, we look up adiabatic. <laughs> it's hard to spell and talk. We look up um, the condition, in this case, adiabatic. And then there are two more columns, one for the temperature profile, one for the heat rate. So I'm just going to give you those equations right now. The temperature profile looks like this. Theta over theta b, or um, the theta applied to the base, is equal to the hyperbolic cosine, which I'll call cosh, times m multiplied by l minus x, where maybe we should specify this. Here's our fin x is referenced from the bottom. And again, this is insulated at the top. And theta b would be theta evaluated at the base. OK, so we have this. And then in the denominator, we have, again, cosh times ml. This is hyperbolic cosine of that whole term. OK, so this will tell us our temperature profile. You know, it's theta divided by theta b, but it would still tell us our temperature profile. Likewise, the heat transfer into the fin, that's how this is um, referenced, is capital M, which we'll define in a second, times the hyperbolic tangent of M times L, where again, small m is given here. And big M is equal to the square root of h p a c times k, then end the square root times theta b. The biggest mistake everyone always makes is including theta b in this square root. It doesn't go there. OK, so we've defined our two equations we need. We know how to evaluate capital M. We know how to evaluate small m. We're actually ready to plug everything in. Uh, but first, we have to answer the question of, where is the maximum temperature? Again, we're trying to find 
is it going to melt? What we care about is, is the hottest temperature lower than the melting point? Well, we're going to use a very similar um, approach to our last video. We know that heat is transferring from the fin because we have heat coming in from these hot gases. And that energy is transferring down the fin into the cool fluid flowing in the base. What that means is heat, all of the energy is transferring downwards. And again, the temperature must decrease in the direction of heat transfer. So our hottest temperature would be at the top surface. In other words, X equals L. OK, so let's plug that in. Uh, first, we'll work on the temperature profile. We've got theta over theta B is equal to, now, X is L. And that gives us 0, the cosh of 0 being 1. So 1 over the hyperbolic cosine of M times L. So you're probably wondering, how do I evaluate the hyperbolic cosine? Uh, well, that, you have two approaches. You can use your calculator, which probably has that functionality, or you can use appendix B dot 1. In either case, when we evaluate it, we find moving theta B over here and doing the math that theta is equal to minus 163. But we've got to remember that theta is equal to Tx minus T infinity, where T infinity is 1200 degrees Celsius. So plugging this into there and solving for Tx, we find that Tx is actually 1037 degrees Celsius. Likewise, we can plug in values for m, again, where theta b is theta using um, this equation evaluated at the base. And we can plug in all of these values, which we already knew. That will give us a value for capital M, which is minus 517 watts. Believe it or not, capital M has units of watts. <laughs> so when we plug in capital M, here and evaluate using appendix B.1, the hyperbolic tangent of M, which we evaluate here times L, then we find the heat transfer, in this case, into our fin, which is minus 508 watts. And you probably are saying, why did I get a negative number? Something's wrong. Remember, this is the heat transfer into our fin, which we don't have. We have heat transfer out of our fin. So we're just going to say, well, Q base, or the heat transfer from the fin into the base, is simply the negative of this number, or 508 watts. So we know the maximum temperature, and we know the heat transfer rate. Luckily, we are 13 degrees Celsius off from melting. Uh, so we're playing it a little close there, but nonetheless, it will not melt and we have found our heat transfer rate for our fin.